Well, good morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We are so thankful, appreciative to God for this, another opportunity for us to come together and to worship, uh, to praise Almighty God. He is a good God, isn't he? And I tell you, he is greatly, greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Won't somebody just shout out, hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell the Lord, thank you. Amen, amen. He's a good God. He is so wonderful, and he has brought us uh, to this, another day, a day that the Lord has made, and we come to worship him, to praise him, to thank him for all of the things that he has done. Let us, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up, and we're just going uh, to praise God and believe him for the great things that he has not only done, but the things that he is uh, doing. We want you to just uh, feel at home. Uh, we do have uh, a guest this morning, Sister Higgins. She told me that uh, she's been following us on Facebook, and we're so glad uh, that you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. And I would be remiss. My uh, good friend, my partner, uh, a workout partner, he told me not to mention him. I'm not going to call his name. But uh, he's my friend, and we work out together, and we eat together. And uh, Kathy, do you know his name? Reverend Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, he told me not to call him. <laughs> hey. oh. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll open up with a prayer and then our young people are going to come and uh, share with us this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're so thankful for this another day. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to give his life a ransom. God, that uh, we might have the right to the tree of life. We pray that you would cleanse us, wash us thoroughly, God. Use us in thy service. God, we pray that whatever said and done here today that it might be pleasing and acceptable unto you. Thank you, God. Thank you for just allowing us another time to fellowship. We pray that, God, uh, we will be blessed and that we will be able to bless others, those who hear us today, whether it's on the Facebook or in this place. God, we just pray that something is said today that would be a strength to all of us. Thank you, Lord. We love you in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We bless you indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Our young people are going to come. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be doing scripture, Philippians 4, verses 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Amen. 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 All right. Please close your hand. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us wake up this morning. Thank you for letting us make it to church. Pray over the people that's in the hospital. People, the family's just going through a tough time. Thank you for my family, and thank you for letting me wake up this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Amen. Mighty, mighty good. We're going to ask that we would uh, stand and do our vision statement together. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. To be effective bridge builders through teaching biblical principles and to lead them through prayer, which will lead mankind to follow after God, thus to live a holy and righteous life to its fullest, to equip the saints, to minister to the less fortunate, hurting, lost, least likely to succeed, we will seek to be, as well as to teach others to be, Christ-centered and to settle for nothing less than God's best, abundant life in him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. We want to uh, ask that we will remember uh, today we have a number of people. Uh, I think it was on the list here just a few minutes ago. Uh, we have a number of people that we're praying for and asking God's blessings upon, and uh, we certainly want to uh, do that uh, today. And remember, we're thankful to see uh, Sister Daisy here with us. We want to continue to lift up her mom, Mama Katie, and uh, thank God for seeing Brother Ashley. We want to pray continuously for Sister Ashley and the loss of her brother, and uh, we just want to keep uh, that family uh, lifted up uh, before uh, the Lord. It's just so many things that are going on. And so we just want to pray and just uh, believe God uh, for his goodness, his strength, his power, his anointing. Uh, things are going on all across the world. We hear of so many things that cause our hearts to be heavy. Uh, but we just want to believe God because we know that in all things, uh, we are to give God the praise, uh, for it is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. So we are thankful for him. We are thankful, and we are blessed of his holy name for us to come together. And so we just really want to continue to pray, pray for the Lowe family continuously. Uh, on this coming Saturday, we will uh, eulogize uh, Brother Frederick Hale, who has been in the, uh, Kent City. For quite some time and uh, he is coming they're bringing him back uh, to Hot Springs so we will uh, be doing uh, that service here on the Saturday at 11 o'clock so please be praying for the family uh, lift the family up and uh, keep us all looking to thee so good to see brother James Grave this morning he had some uh, a procedure done uh, back here about uh, almost two weeks ago and uh, he's looking good, and I'm appreciative and glad to see him here, Toya's husband. So we're certainly grateful uh, seeing him here uh, with us this morning. And uh, uh, want good to see Sister Softly. Her husband had a, a surgery, and he's still going through recuperation time. So we want to just keep him uh, lifted up. There may be names I, I forget, you know, and it's not intentional. But uh, I, I just believe that we ought to pray. We're thankful for uh, Mother Jackson, uh, Brother Herbert Jones. And, and my, my heart just, when I, when I look at Brother Jones, uh, a man 100 years old, and he's here every Sunday. And uh, he loves the Lord. He loves uh, worshiping God and praising God. And, and I'm just so thankful for that. He and I go back a long ways. We served as deacons together at the St. Thomas Church. Uh, back years ago. So I am thankful for him. Uh, he's a great spirit, a uh, great person in the body of Christ. So let's just pray for our young people who uh, have gone back to school and uh, uh, some of the ministers here in this uh, city. Uh, we had an opportunity to go to, I think, pretty much most all of the uh, schools here in the Hot Springs area. And we went in and prayed and prayed. Uh, laid hands on the doors where students go in to the classroom and we just pray in God's uh, safety and God's uh, anointing on all of them. So let's just uh, just go to the Lord. Let's believe him for we know God is able. God, we've come again today in our 
hearts, O oh God, are lifted up to you. We pray that you will forgive us and cleanse us of all of our sins and iniquities, that you would wash us thoroughly, cleanse us through and through. God, these are some very turbulent times, times of confusion, troubles, chaos on every side. Every time we turn on the television, it seems that we're not really getting any real good news, but seems that things are getting worse by the moment, by the second. But God, would you to help, we know we can do all things through you who strengthen us. And so we come and we ask you, cleanse us right now. Guide us, oh God, guide us over thou great Jehovah as we pilgrim through this barren land. We're weak, God, but thou art mighty. And so we ask you to hold us with your powerful hand. Feed us, God, with bread from heaven till we want no more. Use us, I pray. I pray, God, for all of the people that are here right now. I pray for those who are listening to us on Facebook. We pray, God, your mighty anointing. We pray that you would breathe a fresh breath of anointing on all of us right now. God, we praise you. We lift up, God, Sister Ashley. God, we lift her up in the loss of her brother. God, we just pray that you would strengthen her in her body. And we realize that she goes through a lot. And so, God, we're just praising you right now because had it not been for you, she, myself, or anyone else, we couldn't have come safely thus far. But because of your grace and your mercy, you've given us the strength to go on a while longer. I want to pray a special prayer, God, for a good friend, Dr. Robert Hanley, down in Pine Bluff. I understand, God, that uh, he entered the hospital, had a stroke. And so, God, we're just pleading the blood right now. Pleading the blood, God. We're asking you, God, to touch him. Touch his body. Touch his body. Touch him right now. We decree healing right now, God. We declare it right now in the name of Jesus. We declare it right now. We say it is done, God, by your stripes. We are healed. We claim the victory. God, we pray for our brother down in El Dorado, Reverend Aaron, who just lost his mother, Roy Aaron. God, would you touch that family strengthen them build them up according to your good riches to your glory to your honor God there are others in this place right now we may not even know about different things that's going on but we know that you are able we ask you to guide us touch right now allow your mercy to flow every person in this house breathe upon us God Breathe upon us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue to pray for Sister Sharon Dobbins, Sharon Harper, all of those, God, who we've been praying for and having on the prayer list. Would you please, sir, look and have mercy. Strengthen us, we pray. We pray by the power, the anointing of Almighty God. Have thine own way. You are good, God. And you are greatly to be praised. We thank you right now. Bless all that we are to pray for. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, we pray. And we thank you for it. Amen. <coughs> Amen. All right. Well, we'll have another musical selection. I don't know if y'all, but uh, we'll move from there in uh, just a little bit. We'll be ready. Uh, for the word, pray for us. Let us just pray one for the other. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Amen, amen. Well, bless God this morning. Isn't it, isn't it something, uh, God's amazing grace, how he just saved us despite, you know, ourselves. But, but his grace was truly amazing, wasn't it? My, it my, was my. amazing. Amen. Bless his name. That 
I found twas blind, but now I see mm, it was through many, through many, many days. Praise Him. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him. Bless his holy name. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank all of you who are here today, and we just pray that uh, you will be blessed uh, even much more than you have already. Uh, God is a good God. Thank our young people. You all did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank all of you. Amen. I want to call your attention today uh, to uh, the third chapter uh, of Acts of the Apostles. Uh, my uh, friend, uh, fellow I went to school with, uh, his dad was uh, preaching, and he got up. They were gone somewhere, and got up and took a text. And his son said, Lord, have mercy. Is he preaching that again? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, children will tell the story, won't they? Well, I just took a stab at this last week, but I'm not finished. So we're going back to it. Amen. With I want to take a little bit of a different turn today in this third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. And uh, truly, I am uh, grateful to see my good friend, uh, Pastor Jones. Thank God for him uh, being here uh, with us. Amen. I want to uh, read in your hearings just two, three verses. I want to start back at verse 1. Verse 1, and uh, I'm reading from the Christian Standard uh, Bible, but uh, uh, let's look at that. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple for the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. A man who was lame from birth was being carried there. He was placed each day at the temple gate called Beautiful so that he could beg from those entering, entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go or to enter into the temple, he asked for money. Peter, along with John, looked straight at him and said, look at us. So he turned to them expecting to get something from them. But Peter says, I don't have silver or gold, but I, what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Get up and walk. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> On last week, I talked to us uh, from the thought of moving from a beggar to a praiser. Moving from a beggar, a beggar's status into the status of becoming a praiser. Amen. T today, I want to go back and look at that, and, and I still want us to see that this man was a beggar. He was uh, lame from birth, and somewhere between birth and this particular time, Somebody had taught him how to become a beggar or to ask for alms. <clears throat> and so when we look at the text today, I want to I look at Peter and John. Here they are, these two men of God. They are going up 
to the temple. It was at the hour of prayer. Going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. And on their way to the temple, they are, they are interrupted. Sometime when we start out doing certain things, life has a way of throwing a boomerang, or throwing something at us that we get sidetracked. And sometimes it's for things that we don't think we really have time for. But sometimes God moves in such a way that he causes us to have to stop and pay attention to what's before us instead of us rushing to get to where we're headed. Please don't misunderstand me. There, there is something to be said for getting where you're going. Yeah. There is something to be said for getting there when you are supposed to be there. It is something to be said for being on time. But I think I ought, to, I ought to just help us to understand every now and then we are interrupted and it's not necessarily because we are moving slow. Sometimes it's intentional and it's a move of God. I was, uh, I, I, I have a pastor friend of mine <clears throat> who, uh, who's a real, real stickler for people being on time. And, and, and I believe people ought to be on time. I, I, I don't think you ought to just uh, slow around and just come in late. And some people think, well, you're doing that because you want to be seen. But how many of us know there are some things that can happen that causes us to be delayed? Things that we really have no control over. I, I, I remember going to the particular church and this pastor, he decided he wanted to confront me about being late. And it was during the time, Brother Moxley, my mother and my father had been moved into my home from Benton. And how many of us know when you are waiting on your elderly parents, things don't always go as according to plan. You, you, you can be ready to walk out. And all of a sudden, my mother who was in a wheelchair, all of a sudden now she needs to go to the bathroom. And so you've got to go back, carry her in the bathroom, and now that's going to bring your wife too. So now she's got to help her and all of this. And by the time you... Get all of that done and get on the way. You're running late. But here's, here's the problem. I, I don't have a problem with people who are sticklers about being on time and being in this place and that place at the right time. But I do have a problem with people being insensitive to what really may be going on. 
Now, I'm, I'm not the greatest preacher around. There's a lot of things I don't know. I, I do know that uh, I, I have a lot to learn. But I do know this. I would really be upset with any member of St. Mark who would tell an individual, if you just can't be on time, I'd rather you wouldn't come. You don't, you don't know what happened. You don't know why. What does that got to do with the text? Peter and John was on their way to prayer. They went to prayer. Nine o'clock, 12 o'clock. Three o'clock. And going to prayer was extremely important because it was a time where they could go or come and commune with God. Pour out your heart before God. And then to get there, with your most astute evangelism or evangelistic person as you are, and you say, I'd rather you wouldn't come. I, I'm just saying what I'm saying. Peter and John going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. And I get the feeling from reading the text that this is not the first time they came through and saw this beggar. As a matter of fact, the beggar himself, we're told, was above 40 years old. In the next chapter. And here they come. And I'm sure they had come across this man's path before. And they're on their way to prayer. They're on their way to spend some time with God. And they're interrupted. By this. Baker. I do not know. I said to you uh, last week, there are times we see beggars on the street. We see homeless people. We see these people, that person or whatever. And we, sometimes we don't like to make con eye contact because there's something to be said for making eye contact. We can tell a lot about a person and their status when we look them in the eye. So this day, Peter and John on their way. And you can almost visualize in your mind, here's a man, if it was a cup or whatever it is, jingling his cup. Can you help me? Do you have some extra you could give to me? And regardless how many times they had seen him. This was the day that they would be interrupted. But look at the text. I'm, I'm not making it up. If we read the text closely, we will discover that the interruption was not necessarily by the man who was the beggar. Every now and then, God will interrupt and tell you, you need to stop off here. You need to hold up here. Don't be so swift. Don't be so fast. Because today is the day that I want to perform 
a miracle and I want you to be a part of it. Wonder how many of us miss out on being used by God because we're in too big of a hurry. God's calling us. Slow down. Have you, have you, have you ever been, have you ever been interrupted by certain things and you got frustrated, you got upset because you were in, in a, in trance to go somewhere and all of a sudden you get held up. I've heard stories, I, uh, I, be, I believe Dr. E.V. Hill, I'm not sure which one said it, but uh, going and there was a storm, got held up because of the storm. And the time he got held up, he discovered, Brother Moxley, that that was the time the storm come through and destroyed people's houses, their cars, their vehicles, and the way he timed it. If I had not been held up, I would have been there in the midst of that storm. But God. Here they are. Two preachers. Somebody said poor preachers, I don't know. They may have had a little bit, they may not have had much, whatever. But they were on their way. And they had seen this man. And this man, I'm sure, had seen him, them. And he's shaking his cup. He's a beggar. He can't walk. He can't run. He can't crawl. He came from his mother's womb, lame. How many people have come here and we pass them by and they came here? We think, well, you know, there are some people, we, we don't pay much attention to them. They, they brought this on their sales. They, if, if they hadn't been out there doing this, hadn't been doing that, they they wouldn't be in this shape. If they hadn't been putting that stuff in their vein. They, but this man came into the world messed up. Couldn't walk. How do you think a man feel when everybody else is getting up, pulling up on the side of the bed, pulling up on this over here, this, this guy came into the world. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder how was the kick inside of his mother's womb? Was he able to kick this way, that way, or just straight up? Or was there any kick? He was born. Lame. Dr. Raymond Bishop tells the story. He says down in, uh, I believe it was uh, taught all timers. Yeah, says that it was a, uh, it was a young lady who had a baby, a girl that had her feet messed up, contorted when she come into the world. And finally, they was out somewhere, and the doctor says, a doctor, they just happened to meet the doctor. And the doctor says, I can fix those legs. And ordinarily, mama's happy. He said, I can fix those legs. But here's the problem. Before I can fix them, I've got to break them. already can't walk, can't run, can't do any of that. And now you're talking about adding, some, afflicting so, some more 
pain to my baby, I can fix it. But I got to break them. And every now and then, God wants to do something specific and miraculous in your life and my life. But sometimes he has to do something to break it. To get us where we can be made. Oh. Going to church at the time of prayer. Man is looking for silver. He's looking for some gold. He's looking for some chain. He just want a little piece of money. And this very day, it was not so much him who stopped them as much as it was the master in glory says, this is the day. I'm going to use you. And the people are going to see it. And they're going to understand this thing of coming to the prayer room, this thing of coming and praying and believing God is more than just talk. That God is able. To do exceedingly abundantly more than we can even think or ask. We ain't got time today now. We, we ain't got time. We're on our, prayer me on our way to prayer meeting. We, we, we told the church we were going to pray for them. I, I told mama I was going to pray for her. I told, yeah, I, I, I done told folk I'm going specifically and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you today. And something good is going to happen to you. Something good is going to come your way. But God says, today, here's a man. You won't even have to go inside. You can just meet him at the gate. As a matter of fact, there's really nothing you have to do but speak a word and extend your hand. <sighs> Woo! I like that. Just speak a word and extend your hand. Yeah. What word? The man said, can you give me, give me something? Can you give me a, a little piece of money? Can you, can you help me? And Peter and John looks at the man and says, I can feel your pain. I know you've been coming a long time and truthfully I hate Seeing you, I, I hate, I, I think he would say, I hate even passing you by because Every time I come here, I see you and there is no, no, no help. Nobody has really been able to help you. I almost, I, I can almost hear God saying to Peter and John, the man asked you a question. Respond to the question. Can, can you give me something? What was the response? The, the response was really not no. The response was what you are asking for. We just some poor preachers. <laughs> I don't know if they were Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecost, all the way. Hey, we just poor preachers. We ain't got no money. I, we don't have no money. But we do have something that it will help you today. How, how in the world with that kind of anointing, that kind of power, that kind of of Holy Spirit upon you, 
How is it that you have walked by this man before and never since the anointing to reach out and just take his hand? I'm about to close. Silver, I don't have. Gold, we don't have. We don't have no copper. We don't have it. We, 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 don't, we, we, we don't have, in matter of fact, we don't even have a checkbook. We can't even write you a check. But I tell you what you do. If you are serious and you seriously think we can help you, look on us. Every now and then, we as people of God under the anointing of God, instead of trying to get people just to look on us because we think we are Mr. and Mrs. Big Stuff, we need to have them to look on us because they are an anointing upon our lives and we know that God is about to use us in a miraculous way. We don't have silver and gold, but such as we have, look on us. If you just look on us, and, 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 and what are you looking for? You're looking because you want your mind to go to another level. You want your mind to be developing into something where God can use your thought process and you understand, don't just look on us, but look at Jesus. <laughs> wait, 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 that ain't even the text there. He didn't say look on Jesus. Yes, he did. Because he said, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, he he pre they, they, he Peter presents Jesus to him and reach out and grabs his hand. Lord God, have mercy. What kind? Woo! When, 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 man, when was when was the last time we seen a miracle? A man who couldn't walk, who couldn't leap, who couldn't run. He he couldn't move his feet. He was paralyzed. And all of a sudden, by the grabbing of the preacher's hand and the little pull, the Bible says his ankle bones began to gain strength. What if they had decided, I'm not fooling with him today. I don't have time. I need to get on the church. I need to get on the prayer meeting. I got some things that I need to deal with myself. I need God to do something for me. But I come to tell you, you can't expect God to do for you when you are not willing to do what God wants you to do for the person that he has sent in your path. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Reach out. Just, come on. Just give a little pull. And, and he, he changes from look on us to in the name of Jesus. Right, rise up. Right, rise up. Right, rise up. You telling the man who's been sitting in this spot, and the only reason he's sitting in that spot is because somebody carried him to that spot and set him there. And now you telling him to get up? He wasn't able to sit himself down. Somebody had to sit him down. But you said, get on up. In the name. And there is power in the name. There is none other, neither is there any other name under heaven given whereby men must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in his name, in the name of Jesus. Rise up. Hey, glory. Rise up. Rise up. Hallelujah. I can almost see him, y'all. They don't pull on him. And, 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 and it's like, what, what's going on here? What, what, what's happening here? And no doubt, what, what's happening? My, my ankle, ankles, they, 
Lord, I didn't know, I didn't know those ankles ever felt like that. He gets up and he starts moving around. And I'm telling you all to move when you think you can't move. Just start moving. You start moving in the name of Jesus. You start moving and trusting in Jesus. And the man stands up and, and all of a sudden they turn him loose. And the Bible says he started walking. He, he, he may not be walking fast, but he walking. He, he walking. He's walking by faith oh yes by by faith by faith and all of a sudden whoo look at look at him y'all he whoo whoo he he ain't hopping too far but he he hopping hopping and then all of a sudden he just that that Peter, that Peter and John is, they, he seemed to forget. He walking with them. He just started running out past them and running inside the temple and start hollering, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't God all right? Is there anybody here know God's all right? Is there anybody here know that God will bring you out? more than a cockroach. He's, He's good. He's good. He's good all the time. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can even think or ask. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I bet you anything Peter and John was glad that they stopped by. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! I, I, you know, uh, 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 Tim, I, I don't know if you have or not, but brother, brother uh, 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 Jones and I, we discussed sermons and everything, and he was telling me about something he was going to preach the other day, and so I told him about uh, Babby Mason. Babby Mason has a song that says, stop by the church sometime. Something that may be said that will help you on your way. Every now and then, we ought to stop by the church. They, I can't think of a better place they could have took him, even though it was on the outside, it was at the gate, it went, but stop by the church sometime. Just stop by sometime because every now and then, God is doing a miracle. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I'm telling you, somebody here today, God wants to do something good for us. God wants to do something mighty for us. God wants to show himself strong. Don't, don't fool yourself, brothers and sisters. I know we say a lot of that stuff is hocus pocus and all of this kind of stuff, but I'm telling you, God is good. God is able. And I'm telling you, I know he's able. I know he's good. My mama told me when I was about two months old, the doctor said I wasn't going to make it through the night. But 70 years later, I'm still here. God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I remember out there being out there going nuts and doing stuff that didn't have no business doing and fooling around in a place that didn't have no business and folk got to shooting and shot in the back of my brother's car that I was driving and a bullet went over my head right in the glove box. Don't tell me what God can't do. God is able to bring us through more than a conqueror. He good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody may want to trust him today. You may be listening on the Facebook. Somebody may want to trust God and know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can even think or ask. Hallelujah. And this may be your time. This may be your designated place that God had for you to just stop by the church. Hallelujah. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. As we stand over the church today. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is a good God. 
and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here today and the spirit of the Lord speaks to your heart, we invite you to come to trust God as your Lord, as your Savior. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. There may be somebody listening over to Facebook today. Maybe you've been crippled a long time. And there are more ways to be crippled than just to be crippled in your feet. But maybe you've been at a standstill for many years. But God is calling that day. And he's saying, whosoever will, let him come. Though your sins be as scarlet red like crimson, come unto me. I'll make them white as snow. The doors of the church is open. My dad, a Christian experience, candidate for baptism. You're here today. Glory. Glory to God. This is a good day. Good day to trust in the Lord, to know that He is God, is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. If you're here, you can come, you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You may be on the Facebook, you can put in the comments. I'd like for the pastor or someone to visit me. I want to know more about this Jesus. I want to know what does it take for me to receive the Lord Jesus into my life. We'll be so glad to share with you and give you the word of Almighty God. The door's open. The door's open. Isn't the Lord good? He is good. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. something you need of today. This is a good time to trust our Lord and allow Him to fulfill that place of emptiness in your life right now. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. to leave today and, and you know how we do with our offering and we want to certainly give you an opportunity to share in that if you're listening over to Facebook and you want to share with the uh, St. Mark Baptist Church we invite you to do that you can go to uh, Givelify on our page and uh, you can share we just thank you thank you so much appreciate all of you for uh, being here I want you to pray for us and pray with us that God's name will get the glory. He's a good God, isn't he? Amen. He is worthy to be praised. And I'm glad there are times uh, the, the old people used to say, God will not only make a way, sometimes God will get in the way. Right. <laughs> Amen. Either way it goes, as long as he's in control, that's what matters. That's what matters. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. Amen, amen again. Amen. We thank, uh, again, Reverend Jones. He's, uh, you know, he, he, he didn't want to say nothing or whatever. <laughs> oh, well, we got time for that, Doc. Uh, we got time for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that, was, that, that almost made my ankles just... <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you all.
thank you all so much. And uh, as we know, we know how we do it. We will uh, give all, you want credit for it. We got uh, 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 envelopes over here. And uh, Joe, you make sure Reverend Jones get one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Give give him an uh, envelope. We we got uh, regular offering. We got building fund envelope. So uh, we we bless God for the time of coming and uh, sharing here uh, together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's uh, remember on next Sunday we will be going to uh, Greater uh, Hope, Greater New Hope in Malvern, mm -hmm. uh, Reverend J O T Lee's uh, anniversary. Uh, I will be preaching there and certainly uh, solicit your support. Amen. Well, let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, we're thankful for what you have done and what you are doing. We pray, God, that you would uh, strengthen us in our walk. Strengthen us, God, that not only our anchor bones will gain strength, but that we will be able to walk in the spirit, walk in the anointing. Walk, God, in your presence that others will see your hand of mercy upon us. Guide us, I pray, from one good degree of grace to the other. Use us, Lord, in thy service. Draw us nearer each and every day. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you indeed. Enlarge our territory. Bless that we cause no pain. We receive it right now. We receive it, God, in the name of Jesus. Say yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. Bless all that we are to pray for. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare and uh, you know how we do our offering, so please uh, let us share in that. And uh, bless God. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.